Hey gang, welcome to the RX Experience. I'm your host, Ali Mukdad, and today we're gonna be covering, see it? It's all over the place. Put it up there, Q. The coronavirus. I'm just here to give you my two cents, maybe more than two cents. I'll throw a dollar at that Coronavirus is a zoonic, zoo. Zoonot can't fucking say that word. It's a big word. It's zoonotic. It's a zoonotic disease. So basically it's transmissible from aminals to humans. Aminals to humans, humans. It's transmitted from person to inanimate objects. Maybe you touch a doorknob, a keyboard, or a mouse. Also, it's all uh, communicated by droplet. What that means if someone coughs or someone sneezes next to you, punch them in the face. I'm just joking. Don't do that. So I'm gonna show you a list of four coronaviruses that are responsible for about 30% of common colds. But you get antibodies to these and you're probably good for a year or two years. These fuckers right here is very danger. This is dangerous. These are relatively new and they're affecting us heavily. Reinfection, we don't know yet, so that's in the works as well. Coronavirus is a RNA virus. So the way it works is it doesn't actually have the machinery to make copies of itself. So what a virus does is basically it hijacks your cells, okay? So it gets in and it takes over the factories in your cells to make more of itself. So it goes in, rewires, recodes, and then starts spitting out copies of itself. So that's what this is. Now, we're gonna welcome our first guest. This is Dr. Aaron, Aaron Levescu. Aaron Levescu. Hey doc, how's it going? Oh, great, thanks for having me. So, um, this coronavirus, is it something that uh, we should still be worried about and concerned about? Um, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, I think that- Not bad, lot not bad. Um, all right, cool, oh. cool. Um, okay, but I didn't get to finish talking. Thank you. <laughs> Great. All Great. right, take care. Bye. That's it. Preventative measures. You hear it all the time. I mean, I'm sick and tired of hearing it. Social distancing. All I hear is so everyone's fucking doing it. Listen to the CDC. Listen to your healthcare providers. Just stay the fuck home. Wash your fucking hands. It's nothing new. Be fucking clean. Make sure you wash your hands for 20 to 30 seconds. I say 30 seconds because when you fucking tell people 20 seconds, Hang on, wash your hands, and then they're gonna dry them off. No, that's not 20 seconds. 20 seconds means get all the crevices, get underneath the fucking toenails, and make sure you're washing your hands after you take a shit. okay? I, I fortunately don't need any fucking toilet paper. I didn't have any problem because I don't wipe my ass. I don't wipe my fucking ass. I have a bidet. Okay, excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> you're having symptoms? We're gonna go into the symptoms. Symptoms are things that happen. The two main symptoms, coughing <coughs> and shortness of breath. That's a red flag. Uh, if you have a fever, if you have any chills, headache, muscle pain, fatigue, loss of smell or taste, please contact your, your healthcare provider. Right now, currently, there, there are no treatment options. Hydroxychloroquine, you've heard a lot about chloroquine. It's an anti-malarial drug. It's approved for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Recently, we've seen some evidence that patients treated with hydroxychloroquine alone had no benefit, but actually increased the risk of death. Remdesivir is the hot one right now. It's an antiviral agent. Recently, the FDA authorized emergency use for remdesivir for patients that had severe cases of COVID-19. There's no current randomized control trial that will substantiate the safety and efficacy of these treatment options. Zero as of yet. What else did I want to cover? Let's go with the Q&A. Top three questions I get. Number one, what vitamins should I take for my immune system? Uh, there's been some clinical trials or there's a clinical trial that associated a vitamin D deficiency and a negative outcome when it comes to any acute respiratory distress or any upper respiratory tract infection. So that means any lung infection. The FDA recommends the, your RDA, your recommended daily allowance is 20 micrograms. 
So you can take that. Don't fucking go overboard with this. This is a fat soluble vitamin and you could experience toxicity if you take too much of it. Ask your physician, check your vitamin D levels. I'll pick vitamin C. I take about 500 milligrams and then I would go with a B complex. That's why I take daily. Also, I'll throw in zinc. All right, great. Uh, another question. What if I dilute some bleach and gargle to kill virus in my throat or swab my sinuses with peroxide slash alcohol? Next question. Hi, Dr. Mook. I took some blood pressure meds and heard they might be bad for the coronavirus. Should I stop for a while? A lot of people are on ACE inhibitors and ibuprofen. What ACE inhibitors do and ibuprofen does as well is increase the amount of ACE2. ACE2 is a receptor. It works as an entry point into a cell. So in order to enter a cell, you're gonna need to access the cell through this doorway. So basically that's what the hypothesis was that if we're increasing the number of these receptors, then fuck, then we're gonna increase the, the chances of us contracting the coronavirus. I know there's a, a separate trial that just came out. So basically they had 12,500 patients and they're tested for COVID. And the study showed that it does not put you at greater risk for contracting the coronavirus. So take your medication as prescribed. We got it. Thank you. If you did like this episode, hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Be healthy. Be happy. Peace, bitches. Or be well. I can't shoot. Let me see it.